Oregon and Texas Tech, when they entered the year heading into this game, felt like they would be two teams riding high after week one. Oregon obviously did their part. Texas Tech stumbled against Wyoming, and a road trip obviously proved more difficult than they expected. But there's still an opportunity for them to get their season on track against the Oregon Ducks. Now, is Oregon going to score 81 points again? Maybe if this is a shootout. Both offenses are extremely explosive, but I highly doubt they're going to score 81 points. So Texas Tech is a team that still is very much a tough team to beat, even if you, you know losing to Wyoming obviously hurt. But this is still a team that expects to be in a good position in the Big 12, that expects to be a tough team to beat, and they get a chance to showcase that when Oregon comes to town. And that's going to be a fun test for both teams. I think it really tests what Oregon can do, and it gives them their first true test of the season. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, like I said, you have one team that's super confident and you have one team that's almost reeling from a loss. Texas Tech lost to Wyoming last week and it was they are got off to a strong start. It's just that they couldn't figure out how to continue putting points on the board. They struggled to to pull away and you know 17 zip to start was a good way to start the game, but they just couldn't figure out how to continue building upon that at lead and how to build that margin. And then obviously Wyoming stuck around long enough and found a way to win the game. Oregon obviously played Portland state. So not even really comparable, but they took care of business. They scored 81 points. So obviously they did not take that test lightly and they reminded everyone that they are on a mission this year. I think the biggest thing for me is the confidence in the quarterbacks. And after what we saw from Tyler Shuck last week, I wonder how much of his confidence is, hurting right now now i think that he will bounce back especially now that he's facing his former team i think that will get him refocused and regrouped but what happens when he runs into a similar situation as he did last week oregon's front seven is really talented and can be really disruptive and he saw that against wyoming as well so if he starts seeing that again what does he do mentally and knowing that baron morton is behind him and waiting for his opportunity does that affect his game? Does, does that affect his confidence? And how does he move on from that? We mentioned the front seven. I, I tell, We were talking about it. If you go back and watch the film, Oregon obviously put on a show, both on offense and defense. They were disruptive against Portland State. I think they have a ton of young talent that is just itching to get on the field uh, to combine with the veteran players that are returning. So this front seven will give Texas Tech's offensive line plenty to work through. And if they struggled with Wyoming, which I really like Wyoming, I think they have one of the better fronts in college football defensively, you're facing a more talented and a better front in Oregon. So you have to step your game up. You have to be able to handle the pressure of facing a more talented team because Oregon does not feel sorry for you. Oregon doesn't care that you lost to Wyoming. They are looking to put up another 81 points. And if Texas tech is not careful, they are going to get run over pretty quickly. So handling the pressure. I think that Texas tech did a lot of good things last week. Texas tech was able to create pressure and disrupt what Wyoming was trying to do offensively. It's just at times Wyoming had the perfect call for that blitz package. And I think that Texas Tech's ability to be aggressive still, the Red Raiders should continue sending different blitzes, sending different looks. They should continue doing that because that will confuse a guy like Bo Nix. That will confuse this offense, and that creates stops and even creates turnovers. So you still have to continue doing what you're doing. I think that they had a good game plan. It's just that they hit a little bit of a rut, and then they didn't handle things well when – the pressure got turned on to them. So now you're kind of back to, you're back to being an underdog. Everyone expects, mostly expects Oregon to win this game. So you don't really have too much to worry about. You just have to find a way to sit down and relax and find a way to build your confidence, continue being aggressive like you were last week. And then after that, it's kind of just up to you how the rest of this game goes. So to me, they're in good hands. I think that they are just fine. I think that they're looking at a big game, one in which they can send a statement message. And I, I think that you're looking at a team that can bounce back. They're looking to shake off that loss. And it's not like Wyoming was a bad team. This obviously was a disappointing loss, but you have to find ways to bounce back and play better. And a lot of that starts with the quarterback. The confidence we talked about in Tyler Shuck, 
needs to improve. He needs to find a way to move on from last week. He needs to find a way to rediscover his confidence. Because when you look at that 17-0 run they started with, Tyler Shuck was throwing the ball really well. He was making a lot of nice throws, and they weren't just you know your typical slant screens. He was throwing posts. He was throwing some deep balls that looked really nice. And I think that he can do that again. Oregon's got a really talented defense, but I think that with the talent that Tyler – Tyler Shuck has available at, at his disposal. This is a guy who can make big plays. This is a guy who is definitely ready to showcase his talent. And obviously the factor of him playing against his former team adds to that. How much? We don't really know. We'll see how much of that is playing in his mind. But playing against a guy like Bo Nix will require you to play your best. Bo Nix, the best thing he did, I, I think it was best for both Tyler Shuck and Bo Nix to transfer. And obviously they ended at different places. But Bo Nix transferring from Auburn was the best thing for his career. And last year we saw a very confident Bo Nix and a, a Bo Nix that was able to make big plays and elevate his team and actually get to utilize his skill set on a winning squad. Now you're looking at a guy who's looking to take his game to the next level. I think everybody has another level they can reach. And Bo Nix is hoping that means a national championship for Oregon. Playing in Pac-12 will not be easy, and a guy like Bo Nix will be a big X factor in determining how successful Oregon is this year. Last week, very efficient, 23-27, 287 yards, three touchdowns, took care of the football, did just what he needed to do, and with the amount of talent that he has out wide, it's easy to see why it was easy for him. And it was easy to see opportunities and find ways to get guys the football. When you look at the, the rushing attack, too, Bucky Irving's a stud. I think he's one of the best running backs in college football. Jordan James had a solid game, 86 yards and three touchdowns. And then when you look out wide, Troy Franklin had a 100-yard game. You have plenty of talent. Terrence Ferguson, Treshawn Holden, Chris Hudson. You go down the list and you find out Oregon has plenty of players that can handle being explosive and, and making an impact on this game. Now, the player to watch in that offense, to me, is Bucky Irving. Finding ways to get him the football a little bit more and finding ways to get him in space will be the biggest thing. And with a new-look offensive line, there are some returners that bring good experience back, but you still have a couple guys that are new and still figuring things out. What do they do against this defensive front for Texas Tech? And that will be an interesting battle to watch because this Oregon offense means business. And then Texas Tech's offense is the X factor here because of what we saw last week. We saw a Texas Tech offense that we saw their good and we saw their bad. We saw the good in the 17-0 run that got them off to a good start. And then we saw the bad where they couldn't get things going. And then they kind of tensed up and they struggled to move the ball and struggled to get points on the scoreboard. And what do they do if Oregon starts off fast? What do they do if they can't move the ball down the field? Do they do the same thing? Because if they do, Oregon's going to run away with this one. But if they're able to stay calm and keep doing what they're doing, I think they'll be just fine. Like I said, they have to block, block that front seven. And a guy that I'm really excited to watch for his career, Mateo Uyangalale, one of the more exciting recruits that Oregon got, and he's already making an impact for the Ducks. What can he do against this Texas Tech offensive line? That will be something I definitely will keep my eye on. And I think that Troy Franklin is set to have another big game. I think that Texas Tech returns plenty of talent in the secondary, but they have not faced a player like Troy Franklin. And we're going to see what he can do. And for that reason, because of last week mostly, I'm leaning towards Oregon. I don't think that this is going to be a blowout. I think that Oregon will take care of business. But do not sleep on Texas Tech. This is a team that can pull off an upset. You saw what they did against Texas last year. This is a team that has plenty of talent, they have plenty of weapons on offense themselves. And if they're able to keep this game close, then I really like what Joey McGuire's squad can do.